guys and girls welcome back to another video of mine on my youtube channel hopefully i should let's see if i can get you slightly back this is a bit of a weird weird one today uh be all right. Yeah, be all right. Should be all right. Anyway, so facing towards this way, but actually on the screen is to my left. I'm pointing on my left side of the screen because they're reversed because of the mirror imaging and all that. Cool. All right. So I've got a sensor here. And I've got a sensor just here in this corner, but you can't see it. Uh, they're both HTC Vives. I've been trying to clean this uh, sitting room up a little bit ahead of time and all that, so I'm getting a new carpet done soon anyway. Um, got to get it done because I've got a flipping piano there in the corner, and for some reason it just goes off and all that. Anyway, um, so what we're going to do, there's it is connected but not sure I can make sure it is, can see a base station, okay. So basically, uh, we are playing, um, I think it's something like called, sorry, there we go, ah, this tracking is perfect on it. Actually this is the best tracking I've ever seen on any sort of game uh, or anything. Now we've got these connected, they should turn green hopefully, hopefully once, uh, we should, um, on the screen you should see me start moving around the screen here, I want to do at least a couple, this is like this, um, right, this is like the arts gallery, that's an exit thing there, uh, so, yeah that's an art gallery, oh, let me just try and get my hair so it stops it from falling. I'm Anthony Kenneth Bishop, this is my channel. I've been getting into like sort of VR for a while. Um, I only just got the HTC Vive assuming it's down in price which is a good price point now. And because I've got a high-end PC, I wouldn't say high-end, it's more like mid-range but technically with high-end parts in it. I've got the i7 6700 which is probably a couple of years old now. Right, I just put my, right now I can see these here, these are the tracking ones and so I can point these in different directions. I can pick this up and then I can move around this upside down that. <laughs> right. The camera I think is like 1200 so it's not 4K, I thought it was actually a 4K thing, but it's about 1200 something by 1200 or 1900. So it's technically sort of 1080p in each one, so it's around about 2K altogether, 2K, um, or 2160 I think it was, 2160. Uh, what's this say? Hi, my name is Finn Sinclair and I am the, what's this called, behind the scenes about the museum project over at caffeinated developer behind the VR Museum of Fine Art. This is what the game's called guys and girls, it's called the Museum of Fine Art. Now let me just get this a, a little bit better. I'm using OBS for this because the thing is like sort of, I wouldn't say it's full screen, but you guys and girls can get the uh, sort of a picture, good decent picture. And yeah, I'm shaking a bit in this. Uh, so, so on my nerves, that's all. Uh, museum, so it's a fine art. The MFA was a labor of love school project. Well, sort of when affordable consumer VR, like the HTC Vive became reality. Well, I wouldn't say it was actually um, cheap. It wasn't cheap, but now it's come down in price it's at a price point where people can afford something like this uh i put that on the table 
uh, early 2016 I knew I had to bring it to my high score after a long few months of cutting uh, bureaucratic red tape and getting approximately 2000 in funding for a brand new HTC Vive system, a suitable PC and all the necessary extras I was able to begin work. The idea behind the VR program at the school is that it will become a flagship interdisciplinary venture bringing together never before related departments like the arts of the history. So they must have scanned a lot of these portraits, uh, sculptures and ideas because oh no. uh, what the hell there we go that's better went on a bit plan there no. what the hell no. there we go it's a weird one to try and adjust it so it's perfect Anyway, uh, so venture brand together, never before related computer science department. I spoke extensively with the head of the art history department at the school, getting a list of requested pieces of art. It's weird as well. I'm, like I'm not even shaking, and it's like I think it's because the tracking system on it. I don't know. It seems might be a bit clunky or something. Uh, at the school getting a list of requests uh, what you are walking, are walking around in now is the result of about three months of non-stop solo effort and more coffee than I care to admit I sourced the 3d models from several places uh, sketch uh, fab Sketchfab is a great online repository and viewer of 3D content. However, most of it is not available for download. The British Museum has a great page full of free to download artwork licensed under non-commercial terms. These models are already textured and UV mapped, meaning there is a little work I need to do to make these look pretty. Um, Back in a second, guys and girls. I'll back in a second. Uh, sorry about that, guys and girls. Alright, uh, shut the door a minute. I just wanted to try and do a couple of videos, or one or two videos. I might have to separate these. But as I was getting into the sound on this, inside, hearing all the drums and stuff and all of that, oh. let me just put this here a sec. Right, as it is, it is Monday. Uh, I haven't uploaded my videos yet for my Slim Fast Live Town. All doing a bit. All right. I can actually, with my headset on, the tracking on this is just amazing. Uh, uh, two seconds. Right, it actually sounds like I'm actually in a place. Like an art exhibit. Right, uh, now there's a button on here for the dimensions of the headset, if I can find it. Uh, ah, is that it? Right, that can actually help, uh, I presume, with the tracking on it. 
to know how far your eyes are looking. Right, I don't know how this actually will work, but uh, can we put it up to 90 or won't it go up any further? No, it's only 75.1 millimeters, which actually kind of makes the eye go a bit squiggly. Two and about there. All right. So what you do is pick up this. Now I can't see shit. It looks okay. It's gonna be color. Oh. I just just trying to adjust this a little bit. Actually, I think I've got to adjust the the focal. I think this might be the focal distance. Between how far my eyes can actually focus in. So the focal so let's put that up. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now sorry about this guys, it does, does take a bit get used to anyway so it's just what you are walking around is now the result of about three months of non-stop solo effort more coffee than I care to admit I saw the three days in the world etc etc scan the world scan the world endeavors to scan as many uh, priceless artifacts as they can and put them up free for 3d print and these are high quality models but they are neither UV mapped nor textured thus is a lengthy process of mapping and baking textures onto these models still they are excellent quality i'm sure they are baking ambient inclusion occlusion onto michelangelo michelangelo's pieta uh, okay let's go for i'm actually in the desk here actually okay Okay, just trying to uh. Okay So it might be able to focus in when well, it's a little bit better. Let's have a look. So apparently when I go like that, it makes your eyes look like they're actually uh, cross-eyed. That's at 73, so it looks like I'm cross-eyed. So if we mix this back in. And I'm going to hit my sofa. Oh, 
Oh, that's perfect. That is just almost spot on. It's just around. What, what is this one? I don't know. Was this right? The statue represents the biblical hero David, a favoured subject in the art of Florence, originally commissioned as one of a series of statues of prophets to be positioned along the roof roofing of the east end of Florence Cathedral. The statue was placed instead in a public square outside the Palazzo della Signoria or Signoria, the seat of civic government in Florence where where it was unveiled on the 8th of September 1504 because of the nature of the hero it represented the statue soon came to symbolize the defense of civil liberties embodied in the Republic of Florence an independent city-state threatened on all sides by more powerful rivals so a bit like the government now where they're trying to uh, threaten on both sides and bringing all kinds of stuff into it uh, so it's Wikipedia CCA share alike so you can share alike apparently so mm, it's around here so this looks like actually uh, close looks like actual marble literally marble uh, so I've got like sort of a wall here and it's a blue wall and this is like sort of my boundaries where I put it so I can look around without falling and breaking my neck this is the limit for me in this room so I can just pretty much slowly walk up to as much as possible and then this wall here is my boundaries except for the sofa because I've noticed with the sofa there it is well, let's go and s it's a shame I can't sit here alright uh, so we've got Michael Angelo or uh, Michelangelo 1504 1504 I know 1501 to 1504 Marble Galleria del Academia Florence I have no idea what the statues is though and what he actually represents but I don't know if he's actually a government sort of official but uh, me looking at the top they've got the big massive like sort of David big statue I'd say it's about 20 30 foot up by the looks of it it's quite tall and then we've got the terracotta army this is actually a whole sort of a gallery huge right, let's go in there oh the buddha big massive buddha right touch the tipter right nothing's happening page for the br amusements of fine arts Okay, so we've got a big giant, I'd say, oh, that is a big one. That's a massive statue. Massive green statue. Looks like a sort of a Buddha. Um, so this has got to be from like India area. Um, so massive actually very good though and then the crossing of the hands as well is pretty cool uh love to go over to there at some point actually it'd be quite cool actually if it started moving and it started moving its legs and then got up or if you could climb to the top of that of the buddha that kind of reminds me of the big statue from uh, tomb raider 
that big uh, one with the, I think there's like six arms. Not much of a history buff, I don't really much read history a lot, but this I can get into. This is the Great Buddha at Ko, what's that? Kotoku, Kotoku in Kamakura. Was that Japan? No, it looks like a Japanese sort of temple, the pitch at the bottom. Uh, I might have to do this in a couple parts, guys and girls. Now, we've got one here. Anna Vir, what's that? Anna Viso, SOS. Anna Viso, SOS. Uh, this noble figure, actually, can I get a bit closer? There we go. This noble figure of a youth is one of the earliest freestanding marble statues from Attica, the region around Athens. It is a type of sculpture known as the Kuros male youth, characteristically depicted nude with the left leg striding forward and hands clenched at the side of most Kuroi, Roy, where made in the that archaic archaic period between the late 7th and early 5th century BC and are believed to have served as grave markers or as dedications in the sanctuary of a god. Uh, the Greeks learned to quarry stone and plan the execution of large-scale statues from the Egyptians who had been working very hard stones for centuries the pose of the kuros a clear and simple formula uh, i do apologize if i do get any of this uh, incant uh, incantations of the names wrong but uh a yeah, um, hundred years from the very beginning however the greeks depicted their male figures in the nude while the egyptians were normally skirted the greeks artists also event, uh, evenly distributed the weight of the figure as though in the act of walking eliminating the re rectangular pillar of stone that is found on the back of egyptian statues actually it'd be quite cool if they had like a sort of a pyramid ones apollo and what daphne augustus of oh so they've got an uh oh we've got some more pictures over there uh, Greek chorus looks stiff and unnaturalistic to us. It exemplifies exemplifies two important aspects of archaic Greek art: an interest in life, life, vitality, and a concern with design. So, if I can get over here, I think I've got plenty of room anyway. Let's just make sure. So we have got a statue which is actually taller than me. Looks about six foot, I'd say at least six foot because I'm about five nine, five, five ten, maybe something like that. So quite a bit of a short ass. Okay, it's got like sort of dreadlocks. Kind of reminds me of something out of like Stargate with the dreadlocks from the original um, I've got some chippings on here on the shoulder and the face here and then the chin the chin looks quite complex got a lot of complexity nose looks a bit crooked so obviously it's probably because they haven't uh, if, I mean if it's done exactly like the statue um, I want now you can't turn it around. Um, uh, can I get around yet? There we go. Now, this is supposed to be like the original sort of five, was that 560? Oh, now I can turn around. So, yeah, so unknown C century. Oh, unknown century. BCE, whatever that is, um, 580, 590, Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York City. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Oh, that's excellent. Nice. 
What's this over here? Uh, Tori Foros. Uh, Polykalitos. Roman marble copy, 120, 150 BCE. Uh, Minneapolis Institute of Arts. Uh, the Dori Foros. Or Dori Por uh, Poros. Uh, Greek spear bearer. Latinist. As Dori Foros of Polykalitos is one of the best known Greek sculptures of the classical era in Western art, depicting a solidly built, well muscled standing athlete, originally bearing a spear balanced on his left shoulder, rendered somewhat above life size proportions. The lost bronze, oh, actually, I was just rendered as somewhat above life size. Proportion. So basically, my god, if this is an actual life, this looks like marble actually. So if I'm looking there, this, this actually looks marble. Armpits um, there as well. Very good detail actually. And a chest bit there, you can see the veins, it looks like it's really veiny as well. You can see the blood vessels. So this person was in really good shape at the time. If it's on accurate, and I'm showing sure it around here. And now he's got something he's sitting on. I don't know if that's something he's actually sitting on just here, like a little podium. And then he's got his shoulders, broad shoulders, quite broad. Uh, so, yeah. And then, right, so if we go the terracotta. Actually, if we go over here, we've just been into the Kotaku Inn, so we'll go to this one here. Ooh. Okay. Men Kukore. Men Kukore. Uh, and his queen unknown Egyptian, 2490, 2472 BC Grey Wacky. Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. The two figures stand side by side, gazing into eternity. Represents the epitome of kinship and the idol human male from form. She is the ideal female. He wears the names on his head, a long artificial beard, and a wraparound kilt with central term, all which identify him as king. Ooh, right. It was represented here the base of the statue, which is usually inscribed with the names and titles of the subject represented, was left. Alright, so yeah. We do it. Oh, I'm not, uh, doing, not doing that again. <laughs> no, so then, alright, guys and girls, and I'll give me a not. second. Oh, is it VR, what are you doing now? You Two playing? seconds. <sighs> what are you playing now? So. Right. All right, hang on, let me just get any things going off here. Yeah. Be right back in a minute. All right, hopefully I don't get disturbed this time, guys and girls. So, anyway, so this is the track packs of the, or track pads, like controllers. So if you guys and girls haven't seen them, this is what they look like on the other screen here, with the camera to the left. But I think it's like reverse backing, so it should be normal. Um, these, I'm not too sure how long they will charge for, the HTC Vives. Um, apparently, with the Vive Pro, they're backwards compatible, so yeah, it should be good. And these would be good as well, like say for shooter games. Say if, um, say if like you connect something, what they should do is make a sort of like a shotgun thing where you can attach the two on together. Maybe that's what these little holes are for, so you can thread like a sort of a rod for it, and then you can just use some sort of like uh, one to reload, to reload the gun, 
I like lift up just to reload. But most, uh, I suppose most of the games now, because this is my first time on these ones. Uh, they're probably to reload them. Are probably like going like this up and down, like the shotguns do when you reload the shotguns up. So it could be something similar to these. But yeah, these look good actually. They got a good sort of um, up and down thing to it. So once um, in VR, the tracking on it is absolutely superb. I've actually with the PlayStation VR headsets that I've got because I've got the PS VR headset. The tracking, I don't know, it just seems a bit lagging behind, but it's still good for a headset. That's, a, that's the whole, you can get bundles now, which are really good. All right, so, out. What I've got a problem with this one is my long hair. I'm going to have to try and see if I can, like, Right, so what I'm doing, I'm looking, the roof looks quite big, it looks huge. I'm um, in a lift at the moment. Claude Monet's Water Lilies, 250 oil paintings uh, painted during the last 30 years of his life. So he done oil paint. Yeah, I'd love to get into oil paintings. Love to actually do them like full proper. Alright, uh. Uh, actually, I need to connect these on. There we go. Uh, there we go. Consuming the game now. My hands. The tracking is really good on it. Compared, if you put, compare this video, guys and girls, with my webcam there, you can see at the same time, match them at the same time. They should be theoretically what I'm doing. So when I bring it down slowly and that. I mean, this is pretty actually awesome. Right, let's have a look. Right, ooh. Right. I don't know why this looks like a print. This looks like a sort of a water print. I don't even know if they do prints at the place, at the sort of things, but they, this kind of looks like sort of a print. I mean, you can get this, I can get close to it. Oh, no, what the hell's that? Is that one gone off? Oh, that one's gone off, that's why. Um, there we go, there's tracking this back. I just put my headphones in a second. I only need the one in. I want to try and set this up in my bedroom, actually. Um, so, where's that? Oh, actually, I'm hitting the uh, sofa. So yeah, my god, this looks awesome. Uh, my name is Lon Preference for producing and exhibiting a series of paintings related by subject and perspective begin in 1889 with at least 10 paintings done at the valley of, oh, I think my brush is down in the Kushrupa, maybe. I don't know. Uh, anyway, these are some of the arts. And we've got this Le Coco, or La, Leoco on Arena's Anakinis and Aphrodite. I think that's the one I've just. Yeah, that's the one I've just. Alright. Uh, so we've got a statue. I don't know what. I was just trying to get him out of something, by the way. As Leo Kuhn, the priest for Neptune, best and chosen by lot into that rogue official, a great ball offered. In time, sacrificial solemnly, solemnly, before the holy altar, through the still sea from Tenidos afar. Yeah, I need to charge these up by the looks of it. 
should have like a little bit in there anyway. But yeah, I'm looking at the. Yeah, it looks like it's dead. Almost. Anyway, I'm looking at the statues here at close. You can actually see quite a lot of detail. Like the um, little spots, the little dibble dabbles. If I go in back here, there's like a snake of some sort, and you can see his little legs. But what really actually fascinates me is the fingertips. I mean, I'm looking at Aphrodite here. You can see the little fingernails, just the very deep, small details. I don't mean like the big, sort of massive details of the hair. Which kind of looks like uh, something out of a, uh, uh, what's it called? Oh shit, that's dying. Uh, but yeah, kind of looks like the one with the snakes for hair, like she's got snakes, uh, Medusa, some of that Greek sort of mythology. Looks quite cool. I like her fingernails. Um, I like the actual veins as well, because if you look up closely. You can actually see the veins on her hands, on her arms, like she's been working out a lot. Uh, God of beauty and mother of Aeneas. Aeneas. Uh, and then we've got the sun. From Troy. Achilles. Is that an Anchises from Troy? Anchises or Achilles? There it goes, going off the controller. Put it back on for a second. Uh, yeah, it's vibrating, means it's dying. But yeah, you can actually see the. What's this? The. Portrait 1716. Anyway, guys and girls, like, I know it's just over here. What's this? Uh, Jean Le Portrait created a pair of large scale marble groups destined for Mali, but soon moved to the Tuileries Gardens, paid to us, and area, and the more famous Ariana Karen. And cheers from Troy. The two groups do not make. Actually, I would love it if they actually had uh, the Greek. I think it was Michelangelo one where you've got the two angels touching hands with the lightning. I hope they actually add this into it because uh, that would be just fantastic. Just something like that. All right, let's have a look. Ah, cool. uh, I can still use the one, I only need the one to look around. Um, what there we go is Julius Caesar, unknown Italian copy of the rose, an Italian copy, so it's not the actual genuine copy. But as you can see, his nose actually, his nose looks like really good, and his ears. My god, I'm so close to this character, I can see every single detail on this actually I don't know what it's like on my uh, OBS what's it like yeah there we go guys and girls I can actually I'm actually bloody out I'm like almost touching him almost touching Julius Caesar it's just that fantastic statue my god even his they've even got his jacket of some sort just there Oh, what's this flashing here? Bust of Demosthenes, Roman copy of Greek statues by Poly E. U. Cotus, the British Museum. Oh, so they've got this in the British Museum. I might have to check this out this year if they've got, if it's a literal, um, not a legit copy, but if it's something good, like if they've got this. My God, you can see his beard. I can see his like little beard here where the line is, his beard. My god, I'm literally I can see his like little uh hair there. Really good. 
Not much into sculptures, but bloody hell, guys and girls. Oh my god. Uh, my god, that's a big head. That's literally massive. Literally. I can see every single, I can see like a sort of, it seems broken, some of the stuff just here. Where his face, because this one's actually that, um, turned off, so. Uh, but yeah, his little hair, his little eyes there, and you can see his broken off nose. My God, guys and girls. Actually, I think I'm... Oh, no wonder I was going for a clip in too far. I thought I was going to go into that ladder then. Literally, I'll bet you guys and girls, so go on, go in the ladder. <sighs> but yeah, some of the detail on this yeah you guys and girls definitely got to check out VR for legit this would be all right actually for people who can't walk or are in hospitals and uh, just want to get around uh, like just want to go out of uh, wherever they want to go or if they want to get out of the country I know that um, oh my god that's a bit too close Sorry about this. Uh, Titus, bust of Titus from a sta uh, statue of Emperor Titus, seventy to eighty A.D. Whatever the A.D. I have no idea what the A.D. is, but I'm gonna have to look it up because it's actually kind of um, inspiring me to do some of these videos. But yeah, I've definitely got to give it out to the people who actually came up with the idea for this. Oh, I can actually hear people. It sounds like people are talking. Carved sculptures of heads, assorted varieties. So it's got assorted varieties, so different ones. Uh, this one up here, this is Minerva, Aphrodite, Achilles, uh, Leo, Co, On, and Aeneas, or Aeneas, and Achilles. I say Achilles, actually, that's a bloody disease or something. Uh, freedom from want. Now I like this picture, this picture, I don't know why, it just looks like a sort of, because uh, I'm looking at the picture here, oh, that's the sofa there, um, yeah you can actually see like sort of cauliflower, broccoli on the table or something, see some sort of happy sort of people there, uh, looking at a big massive like sort of a turkey here, or chicken, must be some sort of like um, special day they're having. And you can see he's got like a little grin on his face like he's up to something evil and devious. Uh, and, then, oh, and you've got him looking through the thing as well. I mean, let's have a look. From a distance. My God. Yeah, guys and girls, if you enjoyed this, do like, favourite, share, subscribe and all that and comment. It does help. And I'll make some more of these videos because I do, I'm actually trying to get into art and stuff. Like, so sort of like looking at the architects and the details and stuff. And uh, if they can come up with some good, like, art videos or some good artery uh, sort of buildings, uh, sculptures, and all that, I'll definitely check them out in some previous videos. Well, up and coming videos. Well, this looks good actually. Uh, can I get back here? I suppose because some arts. You have to look at them from a distance. Uh, what I've noticed with this as well, guys and girls, I've noticed this is exactly the same as the other ones with the um, eye uh, bit on it, where it looks like there's a sort of looks like I'm in a submarine of some sort, or I've got some goggles on or some shit. I've got goggles on. But why can't they do it so they can get rid of this, like this side effect of inside uh, of the VR? That would be quite cool. And just have it so it looks like you're just looking for your natural proper eyes. Oh, that's just gone off. Alright. So, yeah. 
So we'll just have a quick look around because there was something I wanted to look at and that was the Mona Lisa, one of the most famous art paintings and I think I'm going to finish off there guys and girls once I get to so I'm going to have to go back to the left so that's somewhere over here oh my god I definitely got to try and Uh, what's that? Terracottas. My God. I wonder if they have these in a proper museum as well with a lift like this. Because if they've got a lift like this, they'd be alright for my mum. Like, so if I need to. Um, oh, what am I going? I'm going to play the wrong one here. Move that out of there. Because I've popped to some proper museums then. Eh? Oh, what's going on? Alright. What is that? Most famous painting in the world. Which actually got stolen and then I believe it was missing or something. Uh, my God. There we go, guys and girls. The Mona Lisa. One of the most famous, beautiful paintings. Actually, does that look like... Yeah, it looks like you can actually see the, the actual frame as well. On the... Looks like it's actually on a frame, and it looks like sort of oil paintings. It's got that sort of brush sort of look. And can I go forward a bit more? Actually, no. I step back a little bit because you have to admire art and stuff. <sighs> That's good. Oh, oh, but for my what's this down here? Oh, there we go. We've got some. Looks like is it fairies? The birth of Venus. Ah, Venus. Um, it has long been suggested that the Botti Sali uh, was commissioned to paint the work by uh, Medici family of Florence, spe specifically Lorenzo di Pier Francesco di. Medici, under the influence of his cousin Lorenzo Medici, close patron to Botticelli or Bocelli. However, there were no documents associated with the painting and its first identification with the Medici family only comes in the 1550 edition of Vasari's Lives. It depicts the goddess Venus having emerged from the sea as an adult woman arriving at the shore which is related to the Venus Anna de Omen motif motif oh that looks quite cool actually I can go over here a little bit my god guys and girls the detail look at that just absolutely amazing the footprints and this is all for free this is well uh, obviously because you're buying the actual uh, headset but yeah definitely worth something guys and girls for this headset you're getting basically an art gallery in your own home uh, which is fantastic by the way if you like this kind of stuff anyway and then the floor looks like it's oak like an oak flooring and it's massive high up and that's pretty much I'm going to finish off here guys and girls for this episode, long episode or I might actually put the pieces together and if I do I'll put it as a long episode 1080p 60 frames per second I do apologise for the double screen and there's like a little gap in between but you can probably see why I'm doing it but anyway cheers all for watching stay safe all catch you all later I'm actually pointing at the screen because I'm looking at myself there when I've got the camera here. So I do apologise for that as well. Uh, but yeah, you guys and girls, cheers all for watching. Stay safe and see you next time.